Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye. And in fact, I suppose even the title would sort of spoil some people, but I can't rightly call my video Thing Explained and expect that to work, so sorry about that. But as the title suggests, in today's loop, we are going to be talking about the AUX Simulated Reality. And this isn't your grandma's Oculus headset or something. The AUX Simulation is so advanced, it may actually give the Nomai a run for their money, which is definitely saying something. Now, not every detail about the simulation is elaborated on in the game, but there is actually a lot of information about it if you look deep enough, so let's get into it. To find out how the simulation actually works, we're going to have to quickly go over the AUX staffs and how they seem to function, because they actually do play a huge role in not only creating the simulation, but also how they experience reality within that simulation. So to quickly recap them, the simple fact of the staffs are they are able to read and overwrite at least one of your senses through essentially hijacking your consciousness or perhaps even your brainwaves. They are able to scan and read the user's mind and give anyone standing in the light that they emit a vision. I think they do this by reading and sending out certain wavelengths of light with the base fire and lens, but really that part isn't too important. What is important is the staffs are able to do these things, both read sensory information that is in your mind by scanning you, and implant new sensory information into your mind that was not there before. And this was integral to the believability and realism of the simulation, which is kind of an oxymoron, right? Realism of simulation, but hey. But with that out of the way, we can actually get in to the sim. Luckily for us, the birth of the simulation is actually shown to us, and though it's a quick vision, it is pretty interesting. To create the simulation, the AUX had to use a computer, which we can only see in the reels and can't find much more information about, but I think it's safe to assume that it was a pretty powerful freaking computer, and using this, the AUX took advantage of the staff and its amazing abilities. All they had to do was actively remember their home planet, and the staff did the rest. Likely, the same way the staffs can implant new information into our mind, the staff simply conveyed this information in a language that the computer was able to understand. And then the computer turned it into a digitized and fully simulated reality, including all of the senses that you would experience in it, from how the ground felt all the way down to how the flower smelled in the morning all assigned a digital value, stored, and simulated within the computer. But this left the AUX with a digitized and perfectly simulated reality inside of the computer with absolutely no way of accessing it themselves. In other words, the simulation just wasn't complete yet, and this is where the staffs come back in. Since the staffs were both able to read the data running through the simulation and implant sensory data inside the user's mind, they were the perfect tool to allow the AUX to actually experience the sim. But they didn't have any technology designed for this more expansive purpose. Not only would they need visual sensory data rewritten, they'd need all of their senses to be hijacked and fed new information. And so they modified their staff's light technology to work more effectively and hand in hand with the computer. It took them a while to get it functioning, but after a while, they succeeded. If we take a look at the artifact laboratory and the room in which there was an accident, the explosion here actually tore up the floor to reveal a series of wires below each base fire. These wires are probably being fed information by the computer that we can't find, and the light technology from the base fire is able to pass that information on from the simulation to anybody within that fire's light. But apparently, it's not enough to do that on its own. With only the base fire and computer, the simulation doesn't work. They also need the artifact as well. And though I'm not certain, I think I can explain why. The computer holds all the information within the sim and feeds that to the base fire. The base fire then projects all of that information out in a bubble of sorts. The artifact doesn't react or do much when it picks up the information from this base fire, but rather the artifact serves as a tool connecting or projecting the information about the user to the base fire. 
and this serves as the connection and interface between the simulation and the user. So in short, without the artifact, the simulation wouldn't receive the information it needed about the user to simulate everything. Plus, it could tell the simulation exactly what needs to be properly simulated for it to feel like reality. This way, the whole world doesn't need to be loaded as a convincing reality at once. It's sort of like how video games only load what the player is currently looking at, which would save a ton of processing power and energy. So I think the dual tech with the artifact and base fire serves multiple purposes, but it just feels like the base fire is responsible for projecting the computer's data outwards, and the artifact is responsible for projecting our data back to it. And the fact that our character wakes up reacting to whatever's actually inside the simulation is pretty good evidence that all senses are being simulated and we actually feel them. Now for the most part, this does tell us a lot about how the simulation works and how it feels when you're in it and all of that. The computer and the base fire simulate and project the entire simulation and the artifact scans the user and simulates the being's entire essence and projects reality onto the surroundings around them. But there's actually a bit more to it. In my opinion, it's back where things start to get confusing again. In every location we find a base fire with ALK surrounding it, we also find an antler that serves as an antenna somewhere nearby, with the same color light from inside the simulation and the base fire inside the antenna, as well as a series of wires running into the ground of the stranger nearby the building or antenna itself. And searching more reveals that the tall tower in the Cinder Owls also has three antler antennas sticking out of its roof. And the roof also has these four small discs with each base fire's location depicted on them. Surrounding each disc are wires which are leading to the antler antennas surrounding us. Now, this is all kind of hard to interpret, but it seems clear the information or electricity in these wires are the same type of information that is within the sim, both inside the simulation when reality isn't being projected and within these wires, we can see the same little triangles of green light passing through. The antennas also have this light in them, which look cool at night by the way, and what I think is going on here is each tower's antenna is likely talking to the corresponding antenna on this tower. And this tower is serving as an area in which all the information from all the simulated areas are coming together. And it's clear it's all being sent here, but I can't really think of a reason as to why that would happen. The odd thing here is, though, is the simulation continues on long after this tower falls. So it really doesn't make sense if it's a central piece of the simulation, but what would make sense to me is if it's one single part of the entire simulation's computer which would mean the random wires we find all throughout the stranger are just wires connecting different pieces of the computer. And maybe that's why we find the heat sinks near the water, and that's the heat sinks for the computer, but maybe it's for the spaceship. I, I don't know, I'm just spitballing there. But it does kind of make sense if the whole stranger is the computer. And that would actually make sense of something that confuses a lot of people. The things that happen in the dream world affect the real world. But since the simulation isn't a dream world and it's run by a computer, I mean, that all kind of makes sense. We can see the wires running throughout the entirety of the stranger. It would make sense that they could program the computer running the simulation to activate things in the real world when certain things happen inside of it. Long tangent aside, I think the tower and the antennas and discs we see are just probably one piece of the whole computer, and the larger computer is actually the whole spaceship. But in my opinion, one of the most interesting aspects of the simulation is a bit even more confusing than that. Or maybe even enlightening, I should say. No matter how we look at it, this computer-run simulation is perfectly hosting and simulating our entire essence as a being, even consciousness really, when we die to enter the simulation, the statues for the Ash Twin projects get tricked. They don't even realize that we've died and they continue on recording our consciousness inside the simulation as if they haven't skipped a beat. And we know those statues to only connect to one person with the rain spanning over an entire star system. The fact that the statues seamlessly pick up the simulated version of us the instant we die is really remarkable. And it says a lot about the advanced nature of the simulation. In fact, 
dying to enter the simulation at all tells us a lot about the simulation. Even if we deactivate the Ash Twin projects and die to enter the simulation, we learn a ton. We get a special ending that tells us we have spent so much time in this simulation that the inhabitants don't even attack us anymore. And so much time passes that our former life, our real life, feels like a quote unquote half remembered dream. I really like the fact that the developers added that to the simulation as an ending. It's such an advanced place that the inhabitants and us would eventually feel like it's actually reality. And it puts a little bit more of a twang on the ALK we find watching the reel from their home moon. They're probably watching it wondering why something feels off. They feel like they're home, but something deep down is telling them that they still long for whatever's actually in the reel. And deep down, I think they all know it's fake. But perhaps that's maybe why they perished. Maybe it was just convincing enough to keep them in the simulation long enough until their body withered away. But I suppose that's probably a topic for another video. I really wanted to make today's video because I felt a lot of people sort of dismiss the simulation as sort of hand wavy magic. Yet the developers actually put a lot of thought into it and the majority of it is actually quite like our virtual reality. A computer run simulation with the fire being the computer's connection and the artifact being our headset. Except it's not just simulating visual and audio, it's simulating touch, taste, smell, hearing, and sight all at once for your enjoyment. And even somehow simulating your entire essence just for fun. I don't know, I just think it's a cool and impressive piece of technology that may even be more advanced than anything the Nomai have made. But let me know what you thought about it below. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe for more content like it. And if you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a member on the channel. A huge shout out to Gaming Fortress and Yadu S who recently became members here on the channel. I really appreciate it. And as always, a huge thank you to all the members here on the channel. New or long time members, I appreciate you all the same. Thanks so much for watching. This is a lore explorer diving deep into the simulation so you don't have to.